my beautiful lovelies. It's Emmy. How are you? It's great to see you and welcome back. Today we're going to be making a simple candy that contains only five ingredients and one that I've been wanting to make for a long time. We are going to be making pralines, more specifically Creole pralines. These come from the Louisiana area and the story goes that pralines originally came from France and they were made with almonds, but in the south they adapted it to use pecans. Some people say pecans, pecans, I say pecans, but they are a delicious nut. I don't think anyone can argue with that and I want to make this candy. I think it would be perfect for the holidays, a little simple candy that you can make and bag up and give to your friends and loved ones. So let's go ahead and get started. The recipe that I'm going to be using today comes from this book. It's called Fun Old Dixie Recipes. This and a bunch of other cookbook treasures were sent to me by Mary and Robert. Thank you both so much for thinking of me and for sending me these terrific books. So many wonderful, <laughs> strange recipes that I can't wait to tackle, including a cookbook that was all about 7-Up and what you can make with 7-Up. Another one was called Cold Food Cookbook. That sounds terrible, right? Everything in it's going to be cold, but intriguing. And I think it was a way for appliance makers to promote their appliance by saying, look, look at all the things that you can cook cold with your new refrigerator. So fascinating. At any rate, we're going to be cooking with this book today, and here it is with this wood cover. Isn't that curious? And plastic rings, but inside we have a cookbook. Look at those dresses. Southern Cookbook 250 Fine Old Recipes, and this was published originally in 1965, but this looks to be a reprint that was done in 1971. In fact, Christmas 1971, it says up there, and I love you. Oh, I love that. So we are going to be making this recipe right here. Creole pralines, only five ingredients. Alrighty. So here are the cast of characters, five ingredients, two of which are sugar, two types of sugar dark brown sugar, regular sugar, pecans, cream, and butter. I mean, already it sounds fantastic. Now, when it comes to candy making, it can be a little bit tricky because we're going to be cooking sugar. Sugar is an incredible ingredient. You can make so many wonderful things with it, and it's all about temperature. So I'm going to be using a candy thermometer, but I'm also going to be using a stopwatch. So in the event that you don't have a thermometer, you can use the times I give you for an approximation. So this is my probe thermometer. I really like this tool. They're super handy. If you're cooking a roast and you want to cook to 165 degrees, you enter it here, stick the probe into your meat. This is heat proof. And when your meat turns to the appropriate temperature, it will alarm. And then you can take your meat out and then it's perfectly cooked. And in this case, I want the temperature to be about 230 to 234 degrees. So I set it here like that and then i place my probe into the pot but make sure you don't have it touching the bottom of the pot because then you'll get an inaccurate reading you want to be above the bottom of the pan and this little thing kind of helps this is something i found on amazon it's got a heart that's made out of heat proof silicone it's got a little butt crack in it for your probe and then this little thing right here allows you to stick it on your pot like that so see that clips right there and then you can adjust the depth of the probe without it touching the bottom. Great, right? I've also seen people use binder clips for the same purpose but this I find was a little bit easier to use. So stick that there and into this pot we're now going to combine our cream. Get every last drop of that along with our sugar. Lots of sugar. We are making candy after all. Regular granulated sugar along with an equal amount of dark brown sugar. Bloop. Firmly packed. Can I tell you how happy that makes me? Mm, it's like a little sandcastle. <laughs> it's so perfect. I don't want to destroy it, but I will. Okay. Now we are going to combine this so it dissolves 
and we want this on kind of a low temperature in the beginning just to dissolve the sugars. Now, I can take the probe out because we don't quite need it. We're gonna dissolve this on a lower temperature, and then once it dissolves, we're gonna increase the temperature and cook this at a boil, at a simmer, until it reaches 230 to 234 degrees. Now that may not seem like a very important thing, but in candy making, temperature is everything. Sugar behaves very differently at different temperatures. It's a magical ingredient. And sugar, similarly to another finicky ingredient, chocolate, likes to crystallize, meaning crystals form at certain temperatures. See on the edge here, I have syrup on the side. Well, we don't want those little pieces of dried up sugar to pop into our syrup prematurely because then it can start a crystallization kind of reaction and then make our candy crystallize. So we don't want that. So I'm going to use this brush with a little bit of water to wash that off on the sides. Now, it's starting to come up to a simmer. I'm going to put my probe in now, make sure it doesn't touch the bottom and already it's at 133 degrees. So not too high and we don't want to mess with it. Don't stir it because that agitation again can promote crystallization that we don't want. So it sounds a little fussy, but it's really not that much work. We're at 264. It's happening pretty quickly. Oh crap, I was supposed to do the stopwatch. So once it comes to a boil, <laughs> You're gonna do a stopwatch. I would say that was boiling already for about 30 seconds. So add 30 seconds to the time that I'm adding here. Too busy talking to you. <laughs> all right, so I'm washing all the sugar off these sides. And once we do this one time, I don't think we'll have to do it again. Okay, so while this is going, I'm gonna prepare my pan. I've got a rimmed baking sheet with a silpat, this little silicone liner. You could use parchment, even foil with a little bit of butter so that when we put our candies on here, they won't stick. So that is ready. This is bubbling beautifully. Amazing, we're almost to 10. Yo, okay, turn off the heat. That was like one minute, 27, so like two minutes. Amazing. Now we're going to add my butter, stir that in along with a cup and a half of pecans. Beautiful. We wanna stir our pecans. I'm gonna turn this heat back on and we're gonna stir this so that our butter completely melts and our pecans are entirely coated. And I've turned on the heat again so that it's on medium. We want this to get back up to 234 degrees. Okay. So, turned off the heat, got up to 234 degrees, now it's actually at 240. See, it's very interesting, I turned off the heat, the temperature still increases because it's still very hot, even though the heat's turned off. At this point, we're gonna let this cool for two minutes without stirring it. And I'm gonna see what the temperature is. It's already cooled down to 234 degrees. Very cool. The reason why we're letting it cool is we're going to be whipping some air into it. We want it to be at the correct temperature. A very simple recipe, but lots of technique, right? Alrighty, it's been cooling for two minutes and now we're going to set this for an additional two minutes of stirring until it thickens. Okay, here we go. So right now it's pretty liquid that and we're going to stir this gently to further cool it down before we scoop it onto our tray but we're pretty much done at this point so i think this entire process took maybe 10 minutes so far kind of amazing so we're going to stir this for two minutes until it gets a bit thicker so i've set my timer And then it says to very quickly portion this out. So here's the consistency, and it is a little bit thicker, but it's still pretty syrupy. I'm kind of stirring one stir per second. So two minutes, count to 120. So 120 stirs, then we will scoop. 
And now we are going to ladle this out quickly onto our silk pad. This is one tablespoon at a time. Oh, this isn't working very well. Let me just use a spoon. Ooh, we have to work quickly here. Cold spoon. sure each piece gets a piece of pecan. They are not joking when they say scoop quickly. Okay, now we're supposed to allow these to cool completely before we taste them. And at that point, the candy should be set up. And I'm very curious to see what the texture of these candies are going to be like. When you look at them and you smell them, it smells delicious and caramelly, but is it gonna be soft? Is it gonna be chewy? My southern friends, please tell me how pralines are supposed to be. Are they supposed to be chewy? Are they supposed to be firm? Are they supposed to be stretchy like taffy? I don't know, but follow the recipe to a tea, and once these cool down, we shall find out. Alrighty, see you in a bit. Alrighty, my lovelies, it's been about 10 minutes since I poured my praline mixture onto my silpats, and they've already set up beautifully. Take a look at them. Aren't they beautiful? The big hunks of pecans. Beautiful caramel toffee. Praline. I should probably find out exactly what praline means. Look at that. Because we use the silicone sheet, these pop right off effortlessly. Peel right off. Look at that. Beautiful pecan halves encased in praline carbonate. Absolutely gorgeous. So we're gonna peel these off. I'll put these on a plate and I cannot wait to give these a taste. They look beautiful. There is some kind of blooming happening. Candy experts, tell me what this is. This looks like some sort of crystallization bloom. I am not an expert. I just followed the directions. What is that? That to me does not look exactly perfect, but Sometimes we're not seeking perfection necessarily. Look at that. Okay, now let's break one open. Alrighty, here's the back, the front. Let's break it open and see. Oh, oh, so it has kind of a crumble to it. Can you hear that? It has a crumble. So it's neither chewy nor hard. It's not like a hard candy. But most importantly, how does it taste? Let's find out. Itadakimasu. Oh. Mmm. Oh my. So good. Sweet, of course. We did use two cups of sugar, but this is candy. If you love caramely butter toffee, you will love this. And that combination goes so beautifully with the nutty, rich pecan flavor. So good. The candy kind of melts away. It's a little bit grainy, which has me thinking that I didn't dissolve the sugar completely. Maybe I should have dissolved the sugar in the cream more before I started bringing it up to the boil. It's got a little bit of graininess to it. But the melt away texture is fantastic. It's like the flavors of a caramel apple, that buttery sweetness without the sticky, stretchy pull. This instead is, mm-hmm, more of a soft melt away texture. A little bit of a snap. Mm-hmm, oh, so good. The simple but beautiful combination of cream, butter, brown sugar with that little bit of molasses and sugar and pecans is just so beautiful. Just the perfect, perfect match of sweetness, richness. Fantastic. So good. So stinking great. So if you love pecans or you have friends and loved ones that love pecans too, this recipe 
is a no-brainer. I know because I use the thermometer, this sounds a lot more complicated than it is. You can make this entire dessert in 10 minutes. So all you have to do is combine your sugar with your cream and dissolve that on low heat completely. Make sure it's completely so you don't feel any grains. I think I still felt it a little bit gritty when I was doing mine. Don't do that. Completely dissolve it, right? Once that's dissolved, bring that up to a boil. Once it reaches a boil, cook it for three minutes. Now look at your clock, that's important. After three minutes, then you're going to take that off the heat, add your butter and add your pecans. Bring that back to the heat, cook it for one minute more. Then take it off the heat, don't stir it, let it rest for two minutes. Come back, then stir it 120 times, or two minutes, one second per stroke. Go slowly. Then after 120 stirs, you can very quickly take a tablespoon and scoop it onto some buttered foil, parchment, or a silpat, and let them cool completely. And that's it. Then you've got a beautiful batch of pralines. I got 30 of them. Depending on how big you make them, you could get more or less. Alrighty, my lovelies. There you have it. The perfect little homemade gift to give to your friends and loved ones. All right, my lovelies, thanks so much for watching and big thanks to Mary and Robert who sent me the book so I could make this and thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed that one. I hope you learned something. Please share this video with your friends. Follow me on social media, like this video, subscribe, and I shall see you in the next one. Toodaloo, take care, bye. All right, now it's time to play Praline Fairy and give these to my friends before I eat them all myself. So good. So good. So good. So good. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Butter, sugar, cream. <sighs> Genius. <laughs>